All right, over the next week or so, I'm going to be making some videos basically aimed at the new user, maybe like a Windows user trying out Ubuntu for the first time. And uh, what, I've, what I've noticed um, is that a lot of new people are actually trying Natty, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know how to do with the hype with the Unity or whatever, but it seems that, that a lot of new users are jumping to Ubuntu with Natty. So I'm just going to go ahead and make some videos basically explaining the basics, what to expect, what not to expect with, uh, with Natty versus Windows or a Mac maybe, I don't know. And, um, you know, how to install software, you know, codexes, you know, basic uh, DVD playback, you know, trying to find these, the alternative to what they're probably used to on their other system. Like, uh, you know, like, of course, like what, what we don't have Photoshop, but we can run Photoshop like under Wine, right? But we also have GIMP. We also have uh, alternatives as well. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be covering a lot of those bases, basically just aimed at the new person, all right? And uh, chances are, if you're watching this video, um, you already installed Flash. Either you probably installed Google Chrome, which has uh, uh, Flash pre-installed, or you, you went ahead into your software uh, center here, and you installed uh, Ubuntu Restricted Extras, right? Let me see. Right here? All right, you've probably done that already, right? So what you notice is that you, you've got a lot of your, your codec playback, which would be MP3, right? Your Flash, um, other codexes as well, and also, it comes with uh, Java, right? But it's the open source Java, right? Um, that's fine. I've, I've used the open source one just fine. It works great. But some banking sites, and I believe some games, don't run uh, uh, properly with the open JDK, the open Java. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just show you how to install the other Java, the Sun Java, right? And it's fairly easy to do. So we're just going to go ahead. You already have this installed, so just leave it, leave it the way it is, right? Now we're going to go up to the, up to the top bar over here and go to Edit, Software Sources, type in your password, where it says Other Software. See how it says Canonical Partners right here? When you see this, it's going to be unchecked, so let's make sure those are checked, right? We're going to click Close, and it should do like a little update right here. Now sometimes what I notice with the Software Center when you're adding like little uh, repositories like that, it doesn't refresh right away. Sometimes you have to close it, and sometimes you have to, you know, wait a couple minutes. Then it'll actually show up in in here. Okay, so we're gonna type Sun Java six. Oops, sorry about that. P L U G I N plugin. Here it is. Sun Java six plugin. Install that, and this will give you the non-free closed source proprietary one and um, like I said before the other the, the other job it works fine but when I need to do online banking with certain sites certain certain things don't exactly run properly with it but then again what I've heard too is that I think Minecraft works better with the open source one and not the uh, closed source so I don't know it's really up to you but this is how you get the the, uh, the other job in case you need it right Okay, so that's pretty much the first part of this. You know, like I, you already installed the codexes, right? So let me go ahead and agree to this. Forward. Um, there's some other non-free codexes that are not in the repository in your software center by default. You actually need to add another repository, like the Medibuntu repository, to get those those uh, codexes. Like certain programs, like uh, I mean, video playback, I mean, uh, are not going to work unless you have those other codexes. So to get those, while that's installing, let me just go on the web. You know, forgive my spelling. I think it's M I D, M E D B U, or M E D. Med. Oops, I'm totally mistyping. Medibuntu PPA. Okay, here it is. That's for Intrepid, huh? Oh, here it is. Here's the website. All right. So, like it says right here, it's for like uh, like the closed source codexes and stuff like that. So, let me go ahead and pause it for a second. I gotta make sure this thing installed properly because I don't want it to goof up on me. All right. 
um, like I was saying about this many button too, it's basically um, here because it can't be provided through the software center in a canonical or Ubuntu or whatever. Um, mainly because it has patents and copyrights and stuff like that, licensing. Um, it's basically aimed at, at uh, like the codexes that are, that are kind of oddball, maybe like with a digital camera or something like that. You know what I mean? So when you install this, this should help resolve most of those issues. Like some of the codexes are 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 very very restricted, and you can't really get them over here on the on Ubuntu side of things. So, anyways, um, right here it says a repository how to. Basically, what what this is asking you to do is to copy and paste this into your terminal. Right? It's very easy. Just copy it all. Go up here to the top and uh, type terminal. Right. Right click and paste, hit enter, give your password, and it's going to go ahead and fetch the, uh, the repository URL, I guess, and it's going to add it to your software center, right? Well, I take that back. Basically, to add it to your software center, it says right here you have to add this line. So it's almost done. There it goes. Now we can go ahead and add this line. Copy that and paste it. Hit enter. All right, it's all done. You minimize that. Let's go back to our software center. And the codexes you're looking for, the non free ones, um, basically, we just type like W32. There they are, non free. Click on that and install it. And it should go ahead and download and install. So it's it's a non-free codex and the W32 codex. So let me see the alternatives right here. Click on this, and as you can see, it installed both of them, the non-free and the and the Win32, the W32. So by installing that, like I said before, that should help you with those oddball weird codexes, maybe from a camcorder or whatever. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's very simple. You know what I mean? Um, and all it is a little bit different than, than Windows. You know, Windows, you just download a, a little .exe file and, and run it. Uh, the whole idea of the whole repository system is just to keep all the bad stuff out, basically. You know what I mean? Um, like, when you go on the web, you go to different various web pages looking for a certain piece of software, like VLC. If you go to VLC's website, you know you're getting it from VLC. But let's say there's another website that has VLC on it, and you're downloading it. You don't know really what's really on that .exe file. It could be a virus. Um, by doing the repository system, it basically kind of eliminates that problem, right? The only problem you really have is like if there's uh, some compatibility issues, right? Dependency issues, and I'll go over that in another video, but that's pretty much it for now. Uh, the next video I think I'll probably cover is like DVD playback and uh, probably how to rip DVDs, you know, some simple stuff like that. No big deal. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll, I'll post another video soon. See you guys later.